Hello, congregation, and welcome back to the Unveiled Podcast, week four. I've got Pastor T again. Hi. We are, we are so glad to have you back. I got lots of comments and lots of compliments on just your speaking and your answers from last week. So I'm super glad to have you back. I'm glad to be here. Welcome to the Unveiled Podcast. So, Pastor T, I want to get right into it. Okay, let's go. Last week, you had an awesome sermon where we talked a lot about tapestries. And to be honest with you, I don't know much about tapestries. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you said that really struck me, and you said it right off the bat, were tapestries were for the rich. Mm -hmm. Which makes a lot of sense, right? I'm sure they take tons of time. They do. And there's so many colors. And so, it it seems like it would be a very wealthy thing to have, Mm -hmm. especially back in the day. And... Then you kept saying that everyone has a tapestry. Mm -hmm. And so in my brain, I was kind of trying to connect the dots and realize that, yes, tapestries were for the rich, but we all have our own tapestry, which Mm -hmm. makes us rich, Mm -hmm. but maybe not monetarily. Mm -hmm. Did you mean to do that for your sermon? Well, it's interesting. I didn't mean to do that for my sermon, but the Holy Spirit meant for me to do that. Because going back, because I always go back and I reread my my sermons uh, and I listen to them, Mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, wait, there was an underlining theme that I didn't even catch Mm. as I'm writing it. Because I handwrite my sermon notes. Okay. Because I don't type fast. And so I just, I handwrite. I've done it my whole life. And so I went back and I'm trying to look through all of my little chicken scratches. And I was like, wait, yeah. And it connected. Uh And so thank you for that observation Mm -hmm. as well. Because I was like, what? It did. And because we are. Mm-hmm. We are rich. We are rich, and it does. It's not about money. Mm-hmm. We're rich in relationships. Mm-hmm. We're rich in our. We get to live on this planet. Yes. And get to see the wild birds and the crazy animals and insects. My daughter loves insects, and she is mesmerized by these tiny little creatures uh-huh. on the planet. And yet she knows that she needs to protect right. the planet. And so we're rich in so many things mm-hmm. that have nothing to do with our bank accounts. Mm, that's good. And I think we need to remind ourselves that we're that way. And we're rich in our community. We're, we're, we are rich because we live in a country where we can go to the church right. and the denomination and the faith that we choose. Right. Right. And that's a rarity, and that's one thing I want my daughter to understand, and I've always talked about it when I do children's messages here, is not everybody's able to get an education. Mm -hmm. And especially based on gender, and based on if you have enough money on a a caste system, do you get an education? Right. We get an education here. Mm -hmm. And no matter... Not only that, it's important to this country. It's important to this country to have an education. And so, again... There are so many other things in our lives that we are rich in mm-hmm. that we don't open our eyes enough and our heart enough to understand that, yes, we are rich yeah. in so many other ways in our bank account. I think we take that for granted we sometimes. We do. We do. I would like to hear, because when you talked about like going down this rabbit hole, mm-hmm. I'm a big researcher. Mm-hmm. I love to find topics and research that, but... I would like to hear maybe your top three things that oh, just really oh intrigue you. I know you went down a deep dive. <laughs> deep dive. Deep dive. But can you tell deep. me a few of your favorite things that you found? So the one of the things that we talked about, because you talked about it with the rich, the royalty. Mm-hmm. So they have, tapestries are very, very heavy. Mm. Okay? Because there's a lot of threads. Right. And a lot, and it's a cloth, and then you weave in the threads into it. So they're very heavy. And in your castles, you didn't have air conditioning, you didn't have heat, and so they used tapestries for insulation as well as decorations. Okay, that is very cool. I know. And then King Henry the Eighth, which I'm I'm a little obsessed with King Henry the Eighth. I've been that way since I was like 15. Have you seen the musical? I have. Well, I've heard the songs. Yes. I haven't seen it yet. Yes. But I'm all about I'm all about Henry VIII. And he had over 2,000 tapestries in 17, because uh, he had 17 residences. Oh and so he loved tapestries. 
And so I haven't been able to find any, um, I'm still doing that deep dive to see which ones he had right. in his residencies. But so then you find out how do they get colors? Cause you talked about, I think when you, when we started here, but all the different colors of the yes, threads and yes. everything. Well, when you started out in the medieval times, you had only like 20 colors. Mm -hmm. And your colors came from insects and came from flowers. So like really? red came from pomegranates or poppies. Blue came from, um, it's a yellow flower, and I think it's called a wad. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so rare to get mm -hmm. that if you were trying to take it out of, the, of Europe, that you could be sentenced to death. <gasps> wow. Because it was such a rare flower and they needed it they needed that color for the color of blue oh interesting so it was interesting about that as well and then so then after the french revolution tapestries weren't a thing anymore mm -hmm. okay i mean it had just decimated right. the tapestry industry which prior to that i think in um paris and london in that area they had over fifteen thousand paid weavers oh wow and it was mostly a father and a son team really yes see uh, my mind would go to a woman yes like you think about sewing yes. and you think yes. about all these crafty yes. things uh -huh. women are crafty uh -huh. most of the time most there of the are time. crafty men <laughs> but now you think of like men going towards woodwork yeah. and carpentry and welding and women stick to like the sewing and the knitting yeah. so, so it was, I would have thought yeah. women it was a father son like almost like an apprentice and oh. it took them about two months mm -hmm. to do one square foot oh my gosh tapestry. two months for one square foot talk about like passion <laughs> and uh -huh. I think I would get bored. I would, oh, I'm, I'm done with get this. Bored. I'm like, I've got other things to do. Yes. Um, and then the other thing that was very intrigued, so after the French Revolution, when the tapestry industry wasn't doing what it should, then I think it was around the beginning of the 1800s, the new, a new loom had been created. Okay. And to where it, you could thread the, the threads, you could get them into the loom quicker. Oh. And it's still being used a lot of that, what they learned, we learned in the 1800s. We, like, I'm an expert now. <laughs> what we learned in the 1800s uh, with that new um, loom, we still use today with the weaving and the tapestries that are still made today. That is really cool. So, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> I can see how you went on a deep dive. Oh, yeah. I went on a total deep dive. Yeah, because there's awesome. just so much. But the tapestries are so, I mean, to go from 20 colors and, mm -hmm. and create these tapestries that are still hanging mm -hmm. in places all around the world from the 14th and 15th century. That's pretty amazing. I mean, you think about like paper and books, those eventually break down. Mm -hmm. But if you think about a tapestry that's woven together, I mean, that's even a sermon series right there. You yeah. think about, we've been talking about woven, but strength, strength and mm -hmm. the more and how long it lasts mm -hmm. and woven relationships. And mm -hmm. so I guess that's kind of the point of this the whole, whole series. The but whole, we're woven together and we come together in strength. Just, it is. It's it is amazing. Amazing. And talking about threads. So another part that I loved of your sermon was talking about that we all have threads and from the front something looks so beautiful mm -hmm. and it looks so put together and like it's just it's strong mm -hmm. but from the back it is a mess it is a mess and sometimes there are threads that are fragile and they're breaking and they're so close to be becoming unraveled and we as people are the exact same mm -hmm. way and we've talked earlier in the sermon series about how it's so easy to hide emotions and mm -hmm. hide the hard parts and hide the fragile parts of ourselves and just try and show that strength. Mm -hmm. But eventually we can't do that. Mm -hmm. Eventually we get to a point where we have to open up. I'd love it if you could share about a time when maybe you saw and acted with someone who you could tell that they had some really fragile threads or when the tables were turned and you were the person with the fragile threads and maybe someone helped you. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, and so again, we have to be open to the world around us. Mm -hmm. We have to be, we have to let the noise and the distractions of our life not get the best of us. Yep. 
because when you walk into a grocery store or Walmart or wherever you're going to go shopping or to eat, mm -hmm. notice, look around. Is there somebody sitting by themselves? Why? Why are they sitting by themselves? Right. In a world where we don't spend a whole lot of time alone. We don't. You may spend time alone in your house. Mm -hmm. We all need that alone mm -hmm. time. But if you're going out to lunch, mm -hmm. you're going to a movie, mm -hmm. heck, you can even go to the grocery store in my house without taking somebody with you. So it's odd, especially seeing somebody by themselves at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Why are they by Why themselves? Why So we could just go, okay, whatever. But there have been times that I'll sit there and go, you know what? I have an extra, I have a little extra money. And I'll tell the wait staff, that person over there, I'd like to buy their dinner, mm -hmm. their lunch, their breakfast, whatever. And it already, it always throws the wait staff off. They're like, what do you mean? And I was like, just bring me their check. Yes. It's going to be okay. Um, but years and years ago, one of my youth, we were out eating um, and she paid for, there were three ladies, and she paid for their food. And she, the ladies came up and they're like, why did you do that? And she goes, well, she goes, you reminded me of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to pay for your food. And my, my youth had gone off to do something and one of the ladies came in and she sat next to me and she goes, she saw me. Her thread was breaking mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I didn't need to know right. why her thread was breaking, but her thread was breaking. Oh, how precious. And so I do that. I mean, if somebody's sitting by themselves, because I don't know their story. Right. So I'm going to buy their food if I have the extra money to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, because we don't know what's on the other side of that facade. Right. We don't know what's breaking. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come up to me and I've had them, I had, there's um, a sweet, sweet couple here in the church. And when I started fostering, mm -hmm. they just, they gave us, they gave my daughter little trinkets and little gifts and they just would say here's some extra money for school clothes oh, that's sweet. and it's just amazing that yes i can do it mm -hmm. but their world was open enough to realize this is a new precious child mm -hmm. woven into our church home right and let's let her be part of our church home it's like a welcoming too, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, like you said, you could do it, mm -hmm. but it's the thought that somebody thought about yes. a mm -hmm. way that they could help, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it be monetarily or just acknowledgement, acknowledgement. and said, I'm going to do this to welcome mm -hmm. them, to mm -hmm. bring them into our mm -hmm. tapestry of our church. Yes. So. And that's the big thing that we, but again, the main thing is if we're woven, we're not just woven to our pew neighbors. Mm -hmm. We're not just woven to our circle of friends and our small groups and our Sunday school classes. We're woven to that stranger that we are standing behind at the checkout. Right. We're woven to the person sitting next to us at a gas station. Mm -hmm. All right, not a gas station, but so, oh, I could be, I could be, I just realized something. So, um, because you asked me this question, this beautiful question. I was sitting in discount tire, this was several years ago, and one of our um, ho um, homeless persons, houseless persons, that I, has a dog, and he and I have connected many, many times. Mm -hmm. There were times that I was like, just get in the car, let me get you to the other 35 in a major rainstorm. Yeah. And I know, don't, don't get upset with me, I trust God on that. So he got in the car and got the dogs in the car, because the dogs knew my car, they were always jumping in the car. And, but he was at the discount tire and I was like, Hey, do you have a car? And I didn't know that what's going on. And he was like, no, he goes, they let me come in here with my dog when it's hot. Oh, they didn't awesome. have to do that. Right. They're a company. They can go, no, we don't want you in here. Mm -hmm. But that manager or whoever realize wait a minute we're connected to human beings right and how we treat another human being reflects on our tapestry as mm -hmm. well so again i think we just need to let the noise and the distractions 
settle down right. and we need to be aware of the beauty of people around us and we need to smile at them we need to touch them we need to say hey i see you right because not everybody feels like they're seen right well that was a beautiful end to the sermon series this week and i'm really excited for what's to come but we thank you guys so much for jumping on this podcast journey with us so far we've got some new things coming up this summer we're going to be doing a little bit of a parenting spin for the summer summers are big things for parents it's a time of change a time of upheaval I guess you could call it <laughs> depending on you know what your schedule may look like I know our house is a little chaotic okay, right now yep. and so I'd like to do just um, a series for the podcast that's on parenting but we look forward to that coming thank you thank Pastor you T me. Pastor Teresa however you want to call her <laughs> for being on the podcast again it was awesome until next time guys we'll see you then God Bye. bless